Hey, it's Joe Lines from the Automator. And the other day I was talking to Zayas and I wanted to clear up a little misconception that might happen with some of your scripts and dealing with hotkeys and hot strings and the uh, if command. So let's jump into the code here. Now, the other day when I was working on this, I like to, when I have a lot of code and I'm testing things, I learned this from Mace Ruth. He's the author of Auto Hockey Studio. Uh, what he'll do is he'll create an if function and you can now even have this blank. And as long as this is, there's nothing here, this, this is evaluating, say if this, but that's blank, which means it's false, which means this is going to get skipped. So we shouldn't see the message box when I run the script yet down here. Uh, actually, let's put a message box. So this one should happen, right? So I'm going to run my script. Look, second, we're here. We didn't do this one. However, if I put a one or basically any value here and we run it, now we get the high because we're in here and then it'll get to the second one, right? So I use this a lot to enable and disable large chunks of code where I'm testing stuff. And it was just nice because I could leave up my code and I could change one character and very quickly turn on and off things. Um, now the interesting part is this control T for a message box just says here, right? Um, that is running. And I realized, you know, hey, I bet a lot of people don't, realize this or understand what's going on is if this message box oops, the hotkey comes up inside my if expression checker and i run this what should happen we should should we see the message box and no should the the hotkeys in here this control t should that work well probably not right because we're inside here so i'm going to run this now look it it didn't do either of those which is what we thought right it skipped both of these because, hey, this is zero. So we went right past it and went to this second, right? Here's the crazy thing. If I hit control T, my message box works, right? How in the world is this thing working? And look, I can, I'll can i change it just to um, save it, relaunch it. Second, just like we saw, and I'm gonna hit control T, right? Change. So this is this one. How in the world is this working, right? Like I knew from, and I don't remember why, it was probably just from, I've been using on hockey so long. I knew this was the case, but I didn't understand why. And I was talking to Isaiah and he was explaining, I just don't like the terminology he was using. He was explaining that hot keys and hot strings, they're like directives. They get, when auto hockey gets launched, it executes those first and they happen before the other stuff. And I'm like, Look, to me, it's not a temporal thing. Like, it's not time, right? I would call it more like at a lower level. So anytime a hotkey is there, unless it has like the if-when, you know, it's going to change its behavior, context-sensitive stuff, it will, they get executed at startup before other things happen, which again, I don't like the before terminology. Maybe I'm wrong. It just doesn't seem correct to me. But we can demonstrate that also is, is let's move this if single instance force here. Again, this shouldn't work. I'm going to run it. We just saw it run. Now I'm going to run it again. And now notice it didn't ask, hey, are you sure? I hope that helps. You, you know, it doesn't get into the weeds as to the why, but just so you understand, if you want to enable and disable things that have a hotkey or a directive, at least the hotkeys, you have to use the hotkey and hot string function. This also applies with the, the hot strings. So if I had a hot string here, it said, um, so now... PHA period space that worked, right? It works even though this is zero. That's because hot strings and hot keys are run at a different level. <laughs> so they don't pay attention to this logic, which to me, that's that that makes no sense to me, but whatever. At least I know about it. And I know if I want to disable those, I can use the hot key or hot string function to enable and disable them. But that's a lot more work, and, and that really isn't the goal of what I'm doing with this. This is to enable a whole section, and I'm not focused on enabling and disabling a hotkey, but they do run at different levels. So I hope that helped. If you learned something here, please like the video. It really helps me out. We get a lot more views when people like the video, so I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we're the largest auto hockey channel out there. We create videos and release them at least twice a week, sometimes more often. And if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing because you don't want to miss out on some of these fun and interesting things that can save you a lot of time because this this alone could really be perplexing if you didn't expect it. Cheers.